the news feed in your D2L course homepage can be replaced with a embedded blogger news feed. So it looks like this. Uh, it functions similarly to the original news feed. Pops out a little bit more with some shadowing effects. And you can embed videos and links and pictures just like the original one. But the advantage here is that there is uh, additional ways that you can post material to your course that the original one doesn't. But the original news feed does have benefits such as links to internal tools. So if you'd like to keep that, I made an example here, you can keep it as a small little news feed for the original one and then you can have the links to uh, various assignments that uh, you need students to do. But the coolest part of this is that you can actually post news to your course homepage from your smartphone. I'm going to show you what this looks like. So if you like the idea and think you'd want to try it out in your own course, here's how to do it. So we need to go over to Blogger, and Blogger is uh, one of the Google apps, and you can just use your uh, Gmail address if you have one, or a Google Docs account, and you already have access to Blogger. So here's some blogs uh, I've used in the past. We are going to make a new blog here with that button, and then this is going to be called Demo Blog for now. And then you need to find a unique URL for it. So you just keep trying stuff, see what works. So for this one, I'm going to call it demo blog. That didn't work. How about blog demo? Demo, 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 demo. There it is. Blog demo is our blog. And we're going to keep it on simple. This one here. Okay, so here's our new blog that I just made. And I'm going to click back to go inside. Now this is called the dashboard. It's all your options in behind the blog. And then there is a uh, a preview of here of it. So this is what it looks like so far. But we are going to uh, strip it down so it's just the uh, the blog stream. And to do that, I'm going to go to template. I'm going to first edit the actual template. Uh, we need to find the one called Awesome. Here we are. So Awesome and the second one in sort of a gray version. I find this one works really nicely uh, embedded in the LMS. Uh, if you want, you can try out you know, any kind of blog you want, something that might fit with your existing uh, course homepage. But uh, I think this one works the best just for any generic course page. So I'm going to apply that to the blog. And then I'm going to scroll back up, and there's a button here to actually customize the template itself. So I need to get rid of uh, some of this stuff. So I'm going to go to uh, Layout over here. And right now it has, uh, as you can see in the preview, or the, the layout, uh, bars on the side. So we're going to get rid of that and just make it stacked like this. And then same with the footer. We won't even need any footers. So that one and that one. And then I'm going to go over to Adjust Widths. And drag this over to 600. Or you can just type it in right here. And now it's skinny enough to fit within a widget in your D2L LMS. That's all I need here. So I'm going to apply that to the blog. And it says it's been applied. So I'm going to go back to Blogger. So now I've edited the template, but now I need to edit the layout of uh, 
this particular blog as well through layout here. Um, the nav bar is this thing here. It's the blogger nav bar. And we don't need that when it's embedded in uh, the LMS, so I'm going to get rid of that here. Click edit. And then under all these options, there's one called off. Select that one. Save. Now that one's out of the way. I'm going to scroll down this uh, about me. I don't need my face there. So, oh, I've already, uh, I should refresh this because I've already changed the look of it. There we go. So this isn't at the bottom now, but I still don't want it there. So I'm going to click edit on the about me. I'm going to remove that one. The blog archive, which is just a list of uh, links back to previous posts. I don't need that either. Remove. There's one last thing that you'll need to strip down is the blog posts. So I'm going to edit that here. And now this is entirely up to you as to what you want appearing, but uh, I would suggest leaving the date. But since it's only the teacher that's going to be posting in a news item, I don't need to say who it was. In case you want to stay up late and post things, you can get rid of the time. Don't need to allow students to comment in within the news. Uh, you can get rid of the labels. You can leave this little button here so you can have a quick access to go back and edit that post if you need to. We can get rid of all these uh, social network buttons and I don't need to show where it was when I posted it. And so it'll look like this. It'll have uh, the date, the title, the body of the post, and one tiny little edit icon. And then we'll save that. Uh, I'm going to refresh this. This is what it looks like. This here part you can't remove. That's, uh, that's going to be permanent. Um, a cool part of uh, using a blog this way is that you could just send the blog link to parents and then they wouldn't have to log into the LMS and they can see all your news posts and what's going on. If you do leave it that way, or use it that way, then it's good to leave the, the title. But if you'd like to get rid of the title, then uh, we need to edit that through here. So this is the, uh, the title of the blog. This is also uh, what will appear in the, uh, the tab at the top of your browser. Um, since I'm going to strip it right down, I don't want anything on the title or the blog description showing up. So I can actually select this option here and have a, a picture instead. But I don't really even want a picture. So what I've done is I've created a tiny little, it's not that one, blank blog title. And I can share this same image with uh, wherever I post this uh, YouTube site so you can get the link. All I've done is taken a tiny little screenshot of the same gray that is in the cover or the header over here so that when that's applied instead of the title and description you won't even see anything at the top. Just like that. And this is as thin as it gets. Unfortunately there's some wasted space here but uh, as good as it gets. So we are now all done on this end. We have our blog completely set up and ready to go. It's uh, been stripped down to be skinny and light and it's ready to be embedded inside our LMS course homepage. So now I'm going to create a, uh, a new embedded blog here. So it'll look like this one in the end, but I'll show you how to create it. So click Edit Course. Your uh, Edit Course might be a link or a different icon depending on your own course homepage. Go to Widgets. And there's the one I have set up already, but I'm going to create a new one to show you how to do it. So create Widget. Right, class Blog. Oh, you can name it whatever you like. You could just call it News. I'm going to swing over to content, and then in here I'm going to put the uh, embed code for my blog. But in order to do that, I need to turn my blog into an iframe. Now an iframe basically is like a little window to another website within a website. So I want the blogger website to appear through a window here. And to do that, I'm going to uh, not write the HTML code myself because I don't really know how to. I'm going to get a little help with that. 
So I'm going to use an iframe code generator. Now there's a whole bunch of different iframe code generators out on the internet. Um, I just randomly found this one. It's the web page is drastically ugly, but all we need is, uh, is what's in this little box here. So I'll link to this uh, below the video in YouTube. So it wants the URL of the the page I'm using. So that's going to be our blog, the blog demo. I'm going to copy that. Now when I paste it, paste it on top of this. If you don't, it'll uh, you'll have, end up with two HTTPs, and you don't want that. Just make sure there isn't two. And the width of the iframe is the 600. And you could uh, recommend a thousand. That's for how uh, long you want it to be, or for the height. And I'm gonna get rid of the iframe name. All these things here, just leave them as they are, and then generate. So what it gives us is uh, a little bit of code here. I'm going to copy that. I'm gonna go back over to my widget I'm creating. I'm going to go to this little link here called edit HTML source. It doesn't work to paste in the HTML code here. You need to go here and then it often opens in a funny shaped window. <laughs> paste it in there, update. Right away we already see the, uh, the embedded blogger right there. Save and close. So now I have my class blog widget created and I already saw that it works. I'm going to go to home pages. I've called this one Double News Homepage. So just to show you, I'm going to get rid of the previous one. And add the new blogger. It'll appear in your widget list. So class blog is the one I want. And then save and close. I'm going to go to my main home, and then there it is. There's no content in it yet, but it's all embedded. Now I always recommend uh, stylizing your widgets and making them look nice, which is uh, the subject of an entirely different video. But I'm just going to quickly set this one the way I had the other one. It had a green top bar and no border. You should never have that dotted border. It's ugly. There we go. So now it fits the rest. So as for posting a new post, uh, you can do it in a variety of ways. You could create yourself a link to a blogger like I have here. I also, or, or a shortcut, or bookmark, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I have it open here, so I'm going to create a new post. And this is my first post. Hi. I can insert a picture. Here's my picture. <laughs> Whenever you post something through the blogger site, it's going to offer you to post it on your Google Plus account if you have one. Uh, you can post it there if you want. Maybe students follow you on Google Plus. Uh, but most cases just cancel that. There's my post here. If I go over to my course home and I refresh, that post is inside. And it looks nice. Nicely spaced. Cool shadow effect. Looks good. It automatically gives you this little home button here, I'm not sure why, but it just goes right back to this here, so don't worry about that. I think uh, educationally the really cool part about this is that you could be in a class in a blended learning context and something really cool is going on, maybe in an elementary class and they're doing some fantastic artwork. You could whip out your smartphone and uh, take a picture of the artwork or the students working depending on the, uh, the legal issues. And within uh, you know under 30 seconds, you would have an updated uh, blog post, which can keep parents up to date on exactly what's going on on a regular basis. The real key to success in, uh, in keeping students interested in uh, the blended learning site and using it at home is if there's a lot of updates and uh, things keep changing on there and you have lots of items in your news post, so this is an easy way to do that. You could be out in a, uh, you could be in a grocery store, 
and you see a, a price sticker that reflects some issue that you were talking about in your math class and you take a little picture of it and you post it for your students. So I hope you, uh, hope you try it out, hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below if it works out for you and uh, feel free to contact me if, uh, if you need any help. Thank you. Just before you go, I just want to show you some options in the app for the iPhone. There's also an app for the iPad and Android devices, and they're all pretty similar. Inside you have uh, where you can write a new post, you can view the blog, and you can also get a list of your posts if you want to get back to one to edit it. Uh, what's important is uh, the default for the picture sizes is pretty small, so you can take a picture with your camera and post it on your blog and it's going to be a tiny little picture. So if you go into settings and then image resolution, you can change that. By default it's down here at small, I believe, but you want to set it to large. If you recall, the width of the widget that we made was 600, so this one here, the 640 by 480 doesn't, uh, doesn't fit, but the large one will fit perfectly. So set it to large, click done, and uh, it, it'll remember that so all the pictures you take with your uh, your iPhone will be uh, will fit perfectly. Um, that's all. Have fun.